in relation to Julian James's work, there's a lot of discussion about language and the development of language. What I'm going to be doing today is backing up into the uh, prehistoric art that went on in the caves in Western Europe from the period of 32,000 BP to approximately 11,000 BP when Homo sapiens left the caves, had managed to figure out a narrative and continued from there. My area is imagery. Uh, my research is on imagery and so I'm going to be backing up to the imagistic aspects of thinking. So my talk is about picturing thinking and that place between the image and the picture. Jane's actually pointed this out, uh, that putting a picture together is actually putting elements together. Within literature, all through art history and a lot of other disciplines, there is not much of a distinction made between image and picture, and I am going to uh, articulate that space in between. When they went into the caves, uh, of course this was the last glaciation, so the mouths of the caves uh, provided a kind of protection for people and they lived in the mouths of caves, but when they painted, they went deep into caves, often a mile or more into these caves, and you can imagine they're carrying a torch uh, made out of twisted plant material, and a little later in prehistory in the Upper Paleolithic, they would have been carrying animal fat lamps, as with this um, image we have here of Lascaux Cave in France in around 17,000 BP. These were extraordinary spaces. This would not be ordinary life. This would be essentially an extension of their mind or their mind's eye into a space outside of one's head in order to picture these. Of course, Homo sapiens had had a lot of experience with tools, uh, looking at the aspects of the world, the, the tactile, uh, uh, developing an appreciation for the tactile aspects of the world in order to use it. We evolved in an environment that uses camouflage. We know mimesis on a very, very fundamental level because so many creatures use mimesis to protect themselves. Ah, I look like a leaf now. Okay, they walk by. I'm safe. So there's this affinity we have visually with the qualities of the material aspects of the world. And going from objects, which we had been creating as Homo sapiens for a while before the, the earliest caves that we found with images in them, we'd already developed that kind of thinking, but with objects. To actually take this and make it into an image is quite a transformation in thinking. In 1979, Julian Jaynes wrote a commentary to an article that was done by R. Haber uh, in Behavioral and Brain Science on his research with eidetic, uh, eidetikers. Uh, these were children who had eidetic memory. They would see something, look at something, and they would be able to see it quite literally in front of their face after the initial stimulus was removed. And uh, what, our, what Haber had found, and uh, certainly uh, James was commenting on, was that if the children, the devices the children, because sometimes these were unpleasant, uh, that they had developed in order to get rid of these uh, residual images, was to blink, uh, that they could retain the images better if it was passive rather than concentrating hard on the stimulus first to try and retain the image. And if they focused their attention, it would go away. And if they named it, it would go away. I believe that there is a, a kind of contention between imagistic thinking and language. And the two of those, and I find this, I teach drawing, uh, and I find this in the studio all the time, 